God sing with us? Come bless the Lord, come bless the Lord, draw near to worship and praise the Lord and bless His name, His holy name, declaring He is good. Come bless the Lord, come bless the Lord, draw near to worship and praise the Lord and bless His name, His holy name, declaring He is good. Oh, that man would pray. seat just for a second so that so that really the the aim is that all people are eventually going to praise Jesus Christ there's coming a day where every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus is Lord
to the glory of God the Father. So we are aiming for that day. We're serving and loving and doing all that we can do in hopes of that day because that day is coming. So welcome. It's Sunday. It's Valentine's Day. Just happened to be that day today. It's cold outside. Talk about frigid. But the cars, your car started. So that's a good thing. Cars are starting all over the place. So a couple of announcements. For one, just on behalf of Spirit of God Fellowship, we want to welcome you. Thank you so much for being here with us. If you're a visitor today, we especially welcome you. We bless you. And there's a visitor's booth in the back. You'll want to stop at that booth so that we can just gather a little bit of information from you. And we want to give you something to remember us by. So please stop by the visitor's booth right after service is over. Uh, another announcement is that we're making a, just a change in our men's Bible study. Typically, we've been meeting on Wednesdays. It's coming up this week, but it's going to be on Thursday, this week, Thursday, Thursday at 7 o'clock. And we're going to be going through the book of Philippians. We're going to be studying that book together in small groups and uh, just getting as much as we can out of that book, and then we'll have a pizza time just to, just to wrap things up. So, so please, don't miss that. That's 7 o'clock. And um, not only is it Valentine's Day, Sunday. Whoa. Who did that? What was that? That was an introduction to Gina Novotny's birthday. That's what I was about to say. This is Gina Novotny's birthday. Wow, Gina. You are packing power today. Man. <laughs> so we're all good, though. So we're, we're, you know what? We're thankful for our worship team, aren't we? We are. Just all that they do and just the spirit that they lead us in worship with. So we're going to get right back to that. We're going to continue with our time of worship. Thank you. 
Amen. Amen. Have a seat, please. Wasn't Ozzy Smith phenomenal last week? Wow. You know, he walked out uh, uh, of the building and he said to me, Brian, you really are multicultural. And he said, this was authentic. I thought, oh man, that's cool. So Ozzy's going to come on back again and do another one. I've already talked to him. So uh, I, I just, just, just loved having him. One of my favorite things, the whole service was great. By the way, you're still engaged, right? Just making sure. All right, good. Okay. You never know what happens the morning after. It's like, what? <laughs> Uh, but one of my favorite parts of the, uh, of the service last week, and it was a fabulous service, um, is the dance ministry. And so um, it wasn't just a one and done. We're starting a new dance ministry of which Deneen Banks and Keisha uh, will be uh, dancing for us probably once a month just for now. And uh, you liked that dance ministry, right? It was so cool. And, and so what we'd like to do is uh, Deneen, one of the leaders of the new ministry, uh, it's praise and worship, that's what we're talking about in a, in a few seconds, wanted her to come on up and do a dance, a special dance. Deneen, come on up. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. Still your love fought for me You have been so, so good to me When I felt no worse You paid it all for me You have been so, so Kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't.
Thank you, Deneen. That was fantastic. Thank you so much. Wow. That is a form, by the way, of worship. No question about it. Well, good morning, Spirit of God. Good morning, good morning. I'm so glad that you uh, got up and uh, came to church today. I know that whoever's in the room here this morning really wanted to be here because it's cold out there. It really, really is. But it's, um, it's good to be together. I'm Brian Kamstra, pastor of this amazing, authentic, incredible church. But we're, we're talking a, about praise and worship. I, I, this is the, the first part of two parts. I, I, I really felt like as we began this year, it's time to start talking about what we do. What, what we do every service, we praise him and we worship him. So this is part one, and it's on praise, and part two next week will be on worship. And by the way, um, uh, Phil Tarver, my dear friend, is coming on the 28th. We're going to do a second uh, service completely dedicated to celebrating Black History Month. And, and uh, Dan, i got to talk to you. Uh, I, I don't know if you did. you recognize uh, that's not Brandon up there? Brandon didn't grow long hair all of a sudden. <laughs> That was Anthony Perkin. Remember, he used to play with us for a long time, and uh, Anthony's over at uh, Phil's, but uh, we got to talk afterwards, because we're doing an all-star band, Phil's band and our band, with Phil Tarver. You can't beat that. That's on the 28th. That'll be some praise and worship. But, but here's an equation for you to, to, to factor into your mind, and, 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 and factor it into your mind this morning, and factor it in your mind next week. So... This is praise and worship. By the way, there's, you know, thousands of messages and, you know, all, all kinds of teachings on praise and worship. I, I, you, you just can't do it all in, in a session or two. But, but this is something to remember when it comes to praise and worship. We praise God for what he has done. We, we praise him because he heals us. We praise him because he brings us through difficult times. Can I get an amen? He, we praise him because he loves us. We praise him for his mercy. We praise him for his forgiveness. We praise him for his power. We praise God for what he's done, but we worship him for who he is. Who's God? He's Elohim. My creator, he's Jehovah, the Lord God. Who is God? He's El Shaddai, the supplier of all my needs. He's Adonai, my master. He's Jehovah Jireh, my provider. He's Jehovah Rapha, my healer. We praise God for what he's done. We worship him for who he is. I was honored to lead worship in this church, this great church, for 40 years I led worship up here. I, I can't, well, I, I, led up, I led in the Legion Hall and the Building 19 and then another building and then finally we got here. Oh, at Calvary Gym over there. 40 years. Even when I say that, it's like freaking me out. It's like, wow, that's a long, long time. And, and our church was very unique. See, we had one pastor, our founding pastor, John Sullivan, one worship leader, the same pastor, the same worship leader for 40 years. I don't think there's a church in America that can say that happened. And, 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 and we got, you know, Mary Crowley, who you see up here. She's been leading worship for 40 years now with us, right? Almost. And by the way, you're not going anywhere, Mary. You're not retiring, <laughs> right? We need you up here. But I think back, and I have so many memories. See, praise and worship leads us into the presence of God. I have so many memories of being in the presence of God in praise and worship, experiencing healing, experiencing dancing in the presence of the Lord, experiencing uh, tears, experiencing repentance in the middle. We're just in the middle of praise and worship, and God comes, and there's repentance. That's what happens when you praise God and 
when you worship him. I, I, I think back on many times when we had goosebumps, at least for me, that's my tell. I know God's in the room and I get goosebumps. How, how many are goosebump people? You know what I'm talking about. See, music unites people. Music changes people. Music brings us closer to God. Music is powerful, whether it's secular or Christian. It is powerful. Oh, February of 1964, the Beatles came to America. And they appeared on the Ed Sullivan Show. It was one of the most watched, if not the most watched, event on te in television history. Well, 50 years later, February of 2014, CBS did a, a special to commemorate the 50-year anniversary of, of the Beatles at the Ed Sullivan Theater. And so they put it in the same theater, and they had a big event. And Paul McCartney's there. I watched it. It was incredible. I don't know if some of you watched it. Uh, but Paul McCartney was there with his new wife, and, and um, uh, uh, Ringo was there with Barbara and uh, their kids. And even Yoko Ono showed up with Julian and Sean. And what happened that whole night was incredible, amazing, famous artists got up and covered Beatles songs. Oh, it was, it was phenomenal. And then near the end, Joe Wall. Guitarist for the Eagles, the James Gang, he gets up and he plays while my guitar gently weeps. That song that was just brilliantly written by George Harrison. I think Eric Clapton did the original version. But Joe Walsh gets up, plays while my guitar gently weeps. And the crowd was going crazy, man. You could see some of them just kind of waving their hands a little bit. McCartney's loving it. You know, uh, Ringo's loving it. Uh, Yoko's loving it. She's standing. Can I use this word? Oh, I got to be careful. It was anointed. It was anointed. Not in a Christian sense. Don't hear me wrong. You know, Lucifer, Satan, before he came here to earth or whatever, Wherever he came, he was the worship leader in heaven. Don't you think for one second that he didn't bring a lot of power to music? That's for another time. But, but see, in the church, when we sing praise, in the church, when we worship him, God shows up and miracles happen. The Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. He lives. He's here. He's here right now. But here's a quick question for you. As you praised the Lord this morning, were you just mouthing some words up there on the screen? Were you just going through some motions? Were you, what, what were you doing? Were you a part of producing praise to God? Or were you just watching others produce praise to God? It's a valid question. It's, it's a valid question. So, so, so let, let's get started. Hebrews 13, verse 15. Uh, I, I, I don't, don't try to find these verses. Uh, you can write them down because I'm, we're going to flip through a few verses. So here we go. Paul's got it up on the screen. Therefore, let us offer. Here we go. This is the title of the message. Let us offer through Jesus a continual sacrifice of praise to God, proclaiming our allegiance to his name. So see, praise is deeper than singing songs. Praise is a sacrifice to God. And it's one of many sacrifices to God. You, you know some of these sacrifices. Romans 12, verse 1. Brothers and sisters, I urge you to present your bodies as living and pleasing sacrifices to God. Right? You know that verse. There's a great verse in, in uh, uh, Philippians 4, verse 18. The Apostle Paul, here's another sacrifice, receives a gift. I think it was monetary from one of the members of the church at Philippi. And Paul writes in that verse, 418, it was a sweet, pleasing sacrifice. There you go. There's a second one. Now, my favorite, 
Nobody could talk about a sacrifice of praise better than David. Man, he, he screwed up so badly, like all of us. He knew how to sacrifice to God. And this is one of my favorites. It's a, it's a deep verse. Uh, Psalm 51, 17, David says, after he really went through a tough time, he said, a broken and a contrite heart is a sacrifice to God. The point is, is there's many sacrifices in the Bible that are pleasing to God. And the sacrifice of Praise, what we do every Sunday morning, is one of those pleasing sacrifices. I just want to lay a little groundwork. Are you with me this morning? Are you, are you with me so far? Okay. Here we go. There are two things about every sacrifice. Two things. There are two requirements to every sacrifice that make it pleasing. The first one is the cost. The second is the condition. There is a cost to every sacrifice. See, a sacrifice is not about what I'm losing, what I'm sacrificing. It's what I'm gaining. A sacrifice should not be motivated by loss. It should be motivated by love. Let, let me put it to you. Let me illustrate it this way. A young man is in love. He wants to get married. He's found his soulmate. Now, he's in love. He's going to buy a ring, right? And before he was in love, he worked on his job, and he saved a lot of money for things that he loved, right? We've all done that. So he bought himself a car or a, a boat or... Um, you know, golf clubs or whatever it is. He bought things that he loved for himself. But that's all changed now. He's in love. He wants to get married. He's going to buy a ring. So he goes out and buys that ring, and he gets down on one knee, and he says to his soulmate, he says, Oh, honey, I, I can't think of life without you. I, I want to spend the rest of my days with you. Will you marry me? And his beloved says, oh, yes, I'll marry you. And she's all excited. And then he pulls out the ring. I'm illustrating the true cost of a sacrifice here. Pulls out the ring and he says, but before I give this to you, I just want to tell you this cost me so much. It just cost me so much. That probably didn't fly, did it? That's not a pleasing sacrifice motivated by love. What he should have said was, honey, I've got 20000 in my bank account and I gladly would have given you everything and more because I love you so much, you understand? Cost. There's this great story in, 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 in John 12. It's another story about cost. We're talking about cost. It's, it's a dinner party for Jesus. It's thrown, the dinner party is thrown in honor of Jesus by a guy named Lazarus. Remember him? Jesus raised him from the dead. He's thrown this dinner party. Somewhere in the dinner party, in walks Mary, Lazarus' sister. And she's got a bottle of perfume in her hands. You know this story. She walks to Jesus. Everybody's like, what is she going to do? She opens the bottle of perfume, and this, this fragrance fills the air because, see, this wasn't a bottle of Old Spice. <laughs> this wasn't a bottle of Brute. I'm dating myself. It was, the Bible says, perfume that cost a year's wages. What does Mary do? She dumps it all over Jesus' feet, dries the perfume with her hair. Mary made a sacrifice. See, the more important the person is to you, the less important what the gift costs. See, Jesus 
is the most important person in the world to us. And so when we come here every Sunday morning, what we should be doing is saying, Lord, no matter what it costs, I want to be extravagant in my praise to you because I love you so much. I want to praise you with everything I have, and I'd give you more if I could. But see, here's what some of us do, some. I'm guilty too. Oh, we come in here, and Ari or or, uh, Ashley or Dan or Mary or so, they say, come on, it's time to praise the Lord, and the band gets rocking. And we come in here, and we we say, I know we're supposed to praise the Lord, but I'm so tired, and I'm so bummed out by what's going on in the world today. But, but, but I'm supposed to praise him, so, so all right, Lord, here you go. What? That is not a pleasing sacrifice. What we should be doing every Sunday morning is saying, Lord, I'm tired. We're tired. I get it. Lord, I'm tired. Lord, I messed up today. Lord, I'm worried about things, but thank you, Lord. Thank you that you love me. Thank you for your cross. Thank you that you died for me. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love, and I want to offer praise to you right now. I want to give you all that is within me. I want to bless your holy name. That's praise. understanding the cost. Okay, now about the condition. What about the condition? Well, in the Old Testament, they offered sacrifices, right? Well, Deuteronomy tells us about the sacrifice and the requirement for the condition of the sacrifice. Deuteronomy 21, verse 15 says, Uh, Oh, I'm sorry, where where am I? Oh, I'm sorry, Deuteronomy 15, verse 21 says this about the sacrifice. But if this firstborn animal has any defects such as lameness or blindness or if anything else is wrong with it, you must not sacrifice to the Lord your God. Okay, so that's the blueprint. Blueprint back in Old Testament days. In other words, what he's saying is that when you come, and they offered sacrifices daily, when you come with your sacrifice... It can't be lame or blind uh, or acne on its skin or some kind of rash or anything. It's got to be a perfect sacrifice. Now, that's before Jesus. And here's the good news. See, when Jesus was sacrificed on the cross, he was the Lamb of God. He was sacrificed once and for all. Is that good news? Once and for all. We never had to make another sacrifice again. But there's a condition back then to the, to the, to the there's, a, there's conditions that we had to follow, and I think it's worth mentioning this morning. See, God wanted and he expected perfect sacrifices to him. So here we go. I, I want to kind of bring this home and, and, and turn to uh, Malachi, and we're going to talk about a sacrifice now the condition of the sacrifice that matters. This is such an incredible passage. Now, Malachi was an Old Testament prophet. Malachi comes on the scene, and he's preaching to the church of Israel, and he's opening a can on them. He's not happy with them. God's not happy with them. Now, here's what's interesting. Malachi, between Malachi and Jesus, there's four Hundred years of silence. It's the last prophetic word between Malachi and Jesus. Now, this is important. We've talked about this. Remember, Babylon conquers Jerusalem. Babylon conquers Israel, Judea, takes them away from their homeland to Babylon, right? We've talked about this. Many years later, Persia conquers Babylon. 
Now, 141 years, they've been in captivity, and the king of Persia says to a guy named Nehemiah, it's time. It's time for you and some of your people to go back and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Stay with me now. It's time for you to go back and restore the temple. And so they do that, and a wave of praise and worship takes over. Would you have loved to have been back there? It was incredible. The Bible, the book of the law, was the Old Testament back then, is read publicly for the first time in 140 years. And there was continuous praise and worship, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It was a revival. Now, Malachi comes on the scene. Malachi is about 15 to 20 years after this incredible time of praise and worship. And here's what Malachi says in verse 2. I've always loved you, says the Lord. But you reply, really? How have you loved me? And the Lord replies, this is how I showed my love for your ancestor Jacob. Now, now this phrase, this phrase, I've, I've always loved you. The Hebrew for this phrase means I have loved you, I do love you, and I always will love you. He's saying the same thing to us. I have loved you, I do love you, I always will love you. But see, he's saying this to a church 15 to 20 years after they were in this incredible time of praise and worship. And he is preaching to a church whose love has grown cold. He's preaching to a church that is, is now apathetic. There's no passion. But it's only 15 to 20 years later. That's scary to me. That's scary. And he says, I've always loved you. What does this group say to him? How have you loved us, Lord? Prove you loved us. Slaps him in the face. Verse 6, the Lord of the heavens, he tries again. Armies, the Lord of the heavens' army says to the priests, a son honors his father and a servant respects his master. If I'm your father and your master, where are the honor and respect I deserve? But you have shown contempt for my name. But you ask, how have we ever shown contempt for your name? Are you hearing the heart of God? to a group that praised him and worshipped him 15 to 20 years later. Now he's, he's saying, you don't respect me anymore. And they, what do they say? Oh, well, what are you talking about, Lord? What do you mean we show contempt for your name? Slaps him in the face. Spirit of God, friends, we need to examine ourselves this morning. Is our sacrifice of praise about what I'm losing or what I'm gaining? Is our sacrifice motivated by love or loss? Is our praise this morning extravagant no matter what the cost? Is the condition of your sacrifice, is the condition of my sacrifice acceptable to God? you got to ask yourself this. In my 40 years of leading worship, 40 years, I lost track five, six, seven, eight times. How many times? John Sullivan, Pastor Sullivan, came to me and said, son, you ain't leading worship. Pulled me out of worship. One time I was out for six months. Why? Because I, I came to a place where the condition of my sacrifice was no longer pleasing to God, and I had to sit, a, sit on the sideline for a while to get it right. Are we pleasing to God this morning? Are we bringing pleasure to him? And then last verse in Malachi. This is, this is a tough one. Verse 10. How I wish one of you would shut the temple doors so that these worthless sacrifices could not be offered. I am not pleased with you, says the Lord, and I will not accept your offerings. Whoa. See, 
we assume that we can just march into the presence of God every Sunday morning and in a horrible condition, but everything's fine. We assume, oh, we'd be wrong. We'd be wrong. Let me set the stage for you here. I'm talking in real time. The King of kings and the Lord of lords is here right now. It's not a part of my sermon notes. No, it's real. He's here. I guarantee you, he is here. He lives in the praises of his people. He's here. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning of the, and the end, the name above all names is here this morning. Jesus, the Lamb of God, is here this morning. That's right, that's right. Jesus, Jesus is here. Jesus, the one that was beaten for you, the one that was crucified for you, the one that was spit on, the one that was cursed on, the one that was, his, his arms were, were spread wide, and he went to the cross willingly and lovingly for you and me. That one, he's here this morning. But what do we do, some of us? Oh, we come late to church. Why? Oh, I don't want to. I don't like singing. I come for the word. <laughs> so the announcements are for you. The message is for you. I praise and worship is for God. We got to pick our priorities here. What do we do? We come in late. I don't want to sing. Some of us. Oh, we come in and we talk during praise. We check our phones. We come in here and we haven't repented from sin. I said haven't repented from sin. We all sin. I said having repented from sin. You come before the Lord. We all sin, but we haven't repented Oh, we come in here and we haven't forgiven those that have offended us. And we come in here and we're angry at all kinds of people. You pick them. We're angry at our, at our husbands, our wives, our kids. Our, we're angry at people that don't look like us or smell like us or vote like us. And we come in here and, and we expect to just come into the presence of God and, and, it, and give him a pleasing sacrifice. But see, God isn't pleased with that. I'm speaking to myself. Remember, I'm the guy that was taken out many times. I, we got we to gotta always take a look at ourselves. Just one of these days, God just might shut the temple doors to those that continuously, let me say that word again, he might shut the doors to those that can continuously, are you with me? Not, not right away. I mean, continuously offer unacceptable sacrifices to him. Ask yourself this morning, is God pleased with me? I'm asking myself. Is my sacrifice of praise acceptable to him? Let me be very, very clear. Yes, God loves you and me unconditionally. Yes. Let's go through the basics, fundamentals. Yes, his grace is amazing, and it saved a wretch like me. And he saved a wretch like you. Yes. Yes, he forgives us no matter what we do. Yes, yes. And yes, but is he pleased with us? Is he pleased with us this morning? What do we do? What do we do? Come on up, team. What do we do? I want to close with this one verse. I, I think you have it, Paul. Do you have the Exodus verse? Okay. I want to close with this. What do we do? Next, Moses placed the wash basin between the tabernacle and the altar. He filled it with water so the priests could wash themselves. What do we do if we're not here bringing a, a pleasing sacrifice? I, that, there's a whole lot of stuff going on in that verse, but I just want to pick out one phrase. 
so they could wash themselves. Did you see that? I love it. See, some of us have come here this morning, and I'm guilty. I don't, I, I come sometimes not in the right state of mind, but we can change it like that. Some of us have come here this morning and the condition of our sacrifice needs some work. We got all kinds of stuff going on in our lives. We've got the cares of the world on our mind this morning. We've got all kinds of anxiety. We've got relationships that are goofed up. You know what I'm talking about. We are not, some of us, living according to to the rules, the Bible. We've got some that have just, we've lost our joy, we've lost our hope, we've lost our focus. We're not going to get anywhere with our sacrifices and praise. It's going to be not pleasing to God. I, you understand, I'll say it one more time, so I don't want to be redundant. I'm with you, right with you. So what do we do? Well, here we go. Let me bring it home. I'll tell you what you don't need to do. You do not need to get saved again. Come on. It's okay. You don't have to get on one knee and, Lord, forgive me, I'm a sinner. No, you don't have to get saved again. Because I would dare to bet you that most of us in this room are saved. If you're not saved, see me afterwards. You need to get saved. You don't need to get saved again to offer a pleasing sacrifice if you've screwed up. You know what we need this morning? We need to be washed. We need to be washed in the blood of Jesus. It's all it takes. It's all it takes. We need to be washed clean. See, when we get washed in the blood of Jesus, you know what happens? We look at the cross. It always comes down to the cross, doesn't it? When we're washed in his blood, we look at the cross and we say, oh God, you were the sacrifice. You were the last sacrifice. I don't need another sacrifice because of your blood. And see, when we see that, you know what happens? At least it happens to me as I remind myself of the blood of Jesus. You know what happens to me? I think to myself, oh, man, oh man, I want to give a pleasing sacrifice. Oh, I so wish we could do an altar call here this morning. We can't, so let me do it this way. And, and, and let me also say that I'm, I'm standing. I wonder if some here this morning are listening and you're saying, boy, that's me. I need to be washed. I come here every Sunday and it's like Russian roulette whether my sacrifice is pleasing. <laughs> that's me. It's a simple solution, friends. You just need to be washed. You just need to be washed clean. I wonder if there are some here this morning that would be so bold and have the courage and to just say, to just stand right now and just say, that's me. I need to be washed. Is there anybody here this morning? That's me. I need to be washed. You, you don't have to. This is not a, don't be under any guilt here. You know, I need to be washed. I need to be washed clean so that the sacrifice that I give every day pleasing to the Lord.
so in the presence of God. It just takes a minute just to have your heart, your spirit cleanse again. And there's no guilt in coming to God, asking him to cleanse you. We wash up every day. We hit the shower, hit the bathtub every day. We wash our faces every day. Every day we need God's cleansing. And so thank you, Brian, just for that word. Amen. Reach out. So in that same spirit, let me just read you a blessing from God. God wants to have mercy on you because of his unfailing love, because of his great compassion. He wants to blot out the stain of our sins. He wants to wash you clean from all of your guilt. He wants to purify you from all of your sin. So receive what God wants to give to you today. His great compassion, his great mercy, his cleansing, his forgiveness. It's all yours. It belongs to you. You're his children. It belongs to you. So take this and let's run with this for this week. In Jesus' name, amen. We are going to always be dismissed, not always, but right now. We're going to be dismissed wedding style. So from the back to the front, uh, there, there are going to be some people who are going to just let you know when it's your time to leave your role. So that is what's going to happen. So God bless you. Thanks for coming.